Hey, what's up, guys? This is the February uh, event webinar. Um, we have here myself, uh, spiritual coach, Reverend Raven Nightclaw, HP. HP stands for high priest, of course. Um, and then we have... <laughs> we have the hippie shrink. Hi! <laughs> yes, <laughs> Selena Spencer. All right, so we got a couple of things that we want to talk about. Um, it does have a lot to do with uh, taking your power back. Um, however, uh, we are being very specific here, and we want to give you a good plan moving forward. So we're going to start off with Selena, and then I'll chime in whenever the heck I feel like it. <laughs> Hi, guys. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. If not, well, it's about to get good. So the biggest thing is there's three points I always like to make, and I want to do it. The three things, we're going to start with the first one today. So I have a three-point kind of plan that I started using almost a year ago, um, and it's awareness, planning, and then taking action. Those are the three ways of how I got my power back from many different kind of tragedies, traumas, whatever you want to talk about. I've been healing um, from it. So my biggest thing is what I did was I started doing vision boards. I did one for weekly, monthly, yearly, all my whole life of what I wanted to do. So the biggest thing I did, and I actually started, and I take it a little bit from Steve Harvey, um, is do a vision board over everything you want in life. Okay. So you start out there. Okay. Yeah. You, he says and recommends doing 300 things. Granted, if you don't have 300 things, you can make it up if you want. It's a lot. But I personally have not gotten that far. I may have got 20 items on my list. So whatever it is, if you need to get a pen and paper, you can start working on it today. Um, I'm still yeah. working on mine. I was just curious. Is, is there a way, I mean, how would you describe what is a vision board? And why, why would somebody want to use it? Yes. That's a good question. Um, a vision board in itself is the visual aspect of the things that you want. And it's also kind of stems from manifestation, um, which Reverend over here will discuss a little bit more on my end. I'm going to take it more on the visual aspect to help with the mental health issues here. So this is like if you want to put pictures on there or words. Now, the biggest part is, is I have is the pen and paper idea. It helps to calm the mind. It also helps to use both sides of the brain. And then once you write it down, it's kind of like solidifies exactly what you want and how to achieve it, which is the next thing that we'll talk about next week, which is not part of the planning period. So um, let me interject just briefly. Mm -hmm. um, so your explanation would pretty much be a, a visual reminder of what you desire most and wish to manifest yeah pretty much okay, cool. All right. you can use pictures which i, I kind of dumbed that down a little bit i start with the writing portion of course write down all the things that you want in life and then like if you want to break it down year to year of what you want to do the most if let's say my biggest one is to be debt free Okay. I want to be debt free before I'm 40. Okay. So I do have about, you know, uh, what, eight years left before I'm 40. <laughs> so I'll be on track around then. Um, and I'm not that much in debt. It's just my student loans. Okay. So with that, that would be my big first one. Okay. So let's say I'm going to work on it. So I have eight years to be debt free. Right. So if I have eight years, I can put a picture for the next eight years of let's say what that would represent to me it could be an emotion a strong emotion tied to feeling debt free and or it could be money with the big O circle xing it out okay or a loan that has an x through it or whatever it is to kind of help and then i would hang it on my wall where i am mostly so i'm visually seeing it every day and that gives me the motivation to continue to manifest what that is and what i want mm -hmm. so Depends on what you want, because that's one of my top ones. My second one on the top five would be I want a camper van. 
because I personally am in throughout my healing journey. I have noticed that I am wanting to experience more. I want to travel more. I am getting older. I want to be able to do things before I do get to the point where I can't do anything. Hmm. So a camper van will really help me out and my family. I have two girls. So I want them to experience things too with me before I'm not able to. You know, so with that, that's another thing that I want in my top two. And then, of course, because in the next 15 years or so, due to, you know, a divorce and everything, I have to have a permanent residence somewhere. Um, a small house would be fine for me. Um, but at the same time, I'm comfortable where I am. I did put a small house on there because um, that is something that would be me more of like, OK, I don't have to worry about having to redo everything. Is everything going to be fine? Is my landlord going to do this or that or change it? I already know it's going to be in a somewhat set amount if I had a place. Mm. Will that cause more debt? Yes. However, it is something that I own. So, um, and then the next part would be the channels of YouTube. That's one of my big top four. Um, in the last room, it's kind of my room. Like currently right now, I have extra room. So with that, what I want to do is to be able to transform this room for you to maybe do a photo shoots for people and families, um, because to me, I think it ties in a lot. I can do some recording of some of the sessions with the consent, of course, and of various other things, maybe some family photos that I can do. Um, I already have the camera for it. So just go ahead and just start doing something. So that room I'm going to try to manifest to use is kind of like a workspace office area that can continue to help feel my dreams of the traveling and being debt free. Okay. Okay. So that would be my top five. All right. So I kind of have uh, a little bit of a, little bit of a breakdown here. Cause you know, while you're, talking mm -hmm. um the one thing because i have a dream board that i definitely need to upgrade or update um a couple of things here that you said really rang rang true and then i added a few mm -hmm. um with the dream boards you definitely want to make sure the the images that you use on the boards project and emulate what it is that you'd like to accomplish okay yes. um you said something about debt relief or debt or yes. what i call debt release mm -hmm. um which would be obviously to have no debt you know not to not mm -hmm. anybody anything which is a really good feeling and also uh you can add things like what does prosperity look like for you mm -hmm. or what does abundance look like for you? You know, true prosperity. Um, also, your desires and possibilities. Plausible goals are going to help you reach that. But the dream board, I believe, is just one of many practices that can be used uh, to generate the momentum the energetic momentum uh, to get you to where you want to be. Now, mm -hmm. you guys can look up on, uh, well, you can look up on Google. Uh, you can look up as a gratitude check or the universal, you know, the universe check. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and you, you can like print it out or, you know, however you want to work, work that out. Now, mm -hmm. the other thing here that, ah <laughs> uh, this is gonna you guys better you get back yeah you guys better be sitting down for this one um all right so we're gonna do we're, we're talking next about vibrational vocabulary okay we're talking about energetic speech sound and frequencies okay um so go ahead selena with your take on this and then i'll i'll jump in well, it's kind of very much like what you're saying um, that for me, what motivates me the most is just changing a certain amount of words. Um, me and, you know, me and him has talked about this multiple times about how to say certain things. 
Um, I know even raised growing up, raised with my mom, the biggest thing that in my household we never say is the word hate. Um, right. I was raised up on that. And it's almost like if you spill out or kind of ooze out, whatever you want to call it, negative words, it's going to come back on to you tenfold in a sense. So it's almost like the same thing if it says hate, I hate this or I hate you, whatever it may be. That right there can come back tenfold because that means 10 people may hate you back or may not like what you say. So instead of saying certain things like that and saying, oh, I don't like doing this or something like that, that could help out a lot. Um, one of the biggest things that I always had a problem with, and I, I still struggle with it today, is saying I have to. I have to do this. I have to complete this. Okay, so I do have a tendency to be a perfectionist. I'll be, I'll be, I put myself out there, guys. And one of the reasons is, and I think it was because I was raised like that. I had to grow up really young with, um, with my dad being out in military, my mom working a couple jobs. I was pretty much helping raising my sister in a sense. So I became mom number two, and I've always been, took up on that caregiver role. So in doing so, I always say, oh, well, I have to get her ready or I have to do this. I have to get the house looking good. I have to cook dinner. Or I have to do this. And that carried over into my marriage, into my relationships or into even my friendships in a sense. So for me now, taking a step back, you know, especially with divorce and now being an actual mom, I get to step back and say, well, I get to enjoy these things. I get to get up. I get to go to work. I get to make money. I get to do these things. And then here soon, I'm going to be able to say, I get to travel. I get to have these experiences that I've always wanted to do for myself. So that's one big thing is, um, I've talked about this for years, is just changing the word have to get. That's one big one. Um, and I know a lot of it too, self-esteem is huge too. And that kind of stems from, I'm not good enough. Um, Talking about confidence. Yes. And that all, that stems from the self-esteem aspect too, because if you're, you know, always being put down saying, you know, if you don't get an A or if you don't get a hundred or something that always kind of affects that, well, I have to do better because uh, I'm not good enough if I don't get the A. Um so instead of saying that, you're like, I'm growing every day, even if I don't do this. You know, you have to be able to change that just because you don't get a good grade the first time. Or, for instance, like myself, I am afraid that I am not going to be a good enough therapist or counselor or whatever if I don't pass my big exam. Right. So and then I'm now I have to change it saying, well, I have opportunity to do this. And I'm going to grow from the experience, even if I don't pass. Now, I'm going to say this because I, I'm going to, um, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Um, what I've been taught throughout life is that we have things that we prioritize then we have things that we absolutely have to have mm -hmm. or what some people may call our musts. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm hearing and what I'm sensing from all this is that uh, there's a sense of urgency and to just not letting that urgency become survival, mm -hmm. like that survival mode, um, being able to choose your path, being able to choose which direction that you are going. Now, whether it's good or bad, I mean, sometimes we don't even know. So mm -hmm. what we need to do is, is weigh out the options and find out whether the risk is worth taking for the outcome we desire most. So while, while she was speaking, the, the first words that came out, and I, lo I love using words and mashing mm -hmm. them all together and, ma and making them sound interesting. And the first one that I got was chaotic perfection. Perfect I try to say it correctly. Chaotic perfection like perfectionism. Okay, <laughs> trying to say all that at five times fast. Um, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, I won't do it. Um, another one was uh, ridiculous expectations mm -hmm. and verbal confidence. Yeah. Like in the way you speak, the way that you present yourself, the way that you express who you truly are, know exactly how to do that in the right ways. Mm hmm. And trying not now perfectionism can very well be uh, you know again chaotic because if it's you know perfection is an illusion mm -hmm. and perfection is created based on the individual's standards or values of something or someone so you can Re, you know, you can make the bar as high as you want when it comes to that area, that ideology of what's perfect in your mind, in your eyes, you know, in your reality. However, I'm telling you, the, the verbal, oh, this, who, buddy, and it's, it's a hard thing for me, guys, so sorry about that. Because uh, vocabulary is big with me. Um, you know, I had some challenges in school with, you know, vocabulary and English and grammar, you know, and stuff like that, speech impediment, you know, lisp and a couple other things that nobody really can tell at this point because uh, I've worked on it. But words, I mean, I keep I keep bringing it up. You said hate. Okay. Yeah. I mean, hate hates a, a strong word. Because it's it's almost like you're accepting, and this again, this is the spiritual part of it. This is the energetic part of no, it. No, you're good. Um, it's like you're accepting the strongest evil. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, hate is like rage. Mm -hmm. But let's let's put let's really put it out there. Okay, so yeah. so hate is like rage, and like the highest level of anger that you could possibly have. You know, for someone or something. Now, when uh, there there has been scientific studies that show that sound, okay, meaning you know vocal sound, you know mm -hmm. through our vocal cords, um, and speech. No matter whether it's just regular sound, music sound, tones, or you know musical instruments, or even you just using your your voice, it creates a certain pattern of energy. Okay. And I'm saying this for a reason, because if, if you're the type, which I'm going to say this, and I, I'm so dedicated into getting people out of this mindset of constantly saying these few things that, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if that's something that I finally would accomplish in life is to stop people saying these things, possibly getting them removed, you know, from the Webster dictionary, that would be totally great. Um, one is try because you're accepting defeat before you even begin. Mm -hmm. Hate, obviously, you know, because because of what we just spoke about. Mm -hmm. Want. Okay, why? why now, let, let's just get into this just a little bit. Okay, why is want and worry, okay, the word worry, why are those two words so freaking powerful that it could literally change your life. Okay, so it's the the catchphrase says this: worry creates more worry, want creates more want. Okay, so if you're worried about one thing and you're putting all your time and energy into worrying about that one thing, okay. Because, I mean, we're humans. We obsess over a lot of different stuff. But, mm -hmm. but worry and concern is definitely something that we spend some time with, okay? Uh, whether it be good or bad. So if you're constantly worrying about everything, everyone, every minute of the day, what the universe is going to do is it's going to produce situations and opportunities to compound that worry. And give you more to worry about, more to want. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I mean, full blown egotistical desire, okay, would literally 
make a tyrant out of anyone. Period. Okay. But like I said, the the worry and the want, it's, you don't, you, you, and you, when you say, I want this, I want that, I want, you hear this from kids all the time. I want, I want, I want, I want. Okay. Me, 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 me. Well, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, <laughs> about, about kids and <laughs> parenting. Yeah. We'll get to that soon. <laughs> we'll get to that soon. That's going to be a fun subject. Um, not in this uh, event, but we will get mm. to it in another one. Now, with these words, I mean, you have to be super aware at any given moment, like when you're talking, like you literally have to listen to yourself as you're talking to, to almost put the brakes almost immediately as soon as you feel the words coming out of your mouth. Over time, just like they say, 14, you know, 14 days, 22 days, you know, change a habit, you know, make, make mm -hmm. a belief or what have you. All right. I know a lot of people are like, what the hell is he talking about? Okay. It takes 14 to 22 days to, to make a habit, change a belief or, you know, uh, create, um, you know, something. So the words that we speak and it's okay if you don't believe in magic or witchcraft or paganism or whatever. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you, if you believe in that words are vibration, but those vibrations are actually energy as well. So mm -hmm. it has a certain level of emotions, another set of energy. Okay. It depends on what, you know, it comes from specific chakras, energy points. So it's definitely energy, you know, energy, those emotions is what creates the words that comes out of our mouths, usually, or, or just, the, you know, deducing or, you know, deciphering or, you know, just thought processes by themselves. Now, the biggest things, thing that I would suggest, if you find yourself saying, the, you know, try, trying, want, need, okay, that's another one. Everybody says, I need, I need, I need, I need. Stop mm. doing that. Because it's just it's just opening opening you to more shit that you need. Okay, period. It's just period and period exclamation point period. It's just going to create the universe creates more of what you spend your energy and time on. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you're if, if you're constantly saying I'm broke, um, you know I'm I'm worried about this, or you know I'm I'm scared of this, or what you know, however you want to break it down. Your, your physiological body, okay, and I'm not just talking about the socio, sociological aspect of it. I'm talking about the actual physical part of it where you create these walls, like these blockages and these shackles, even if they're ima imaginary shackles mm -hmm. okay, that, are, that are holding you down from getting to what you, where you really want to be. So paying attention to your words and, and attempting to shift or integrate into a new field of vocabulary will assist in the process of you, you know, creating that which you want and also bringing your power back. Yeah, to kind of piggyback on what you're saying. Now, I know on one of mine things, what it is and how to counteract it, it does have those two words, need and try. But I also think it depends on the contact matter or the context of this sentence or how you structure something. Because with me, if I say I'm so bad at something, I then can switch it around and say, I just need to try to do more of blah, blah, blah in order to be better at it. Okay. Well, why don't uh, at that point, and I again, devil's advocate here. No, um, go for it. Let's just to, to say I have to do better. Well, that's one thing I don't say is I have um, to. Yeah, I mean, in, instead of saying try, because uh, the whole gravity, yes, I mean, a lot. The try has been in the vocabulary since I, yes. I, I could I could remember mm -hmm. um, way before I was born. But okay. it, but it's a situation where when you really think about it energetically, well, at least I tried. You're talking about context. Okay, so, you, you know, you say you say you do you go ahead and you attempt to do something. And you say, you know, you fail at it. You say, well, at least I tried. Okay, well, that, that context is totally fine. But if you say to yourself, well, I'll try. Mm -hmm. Well, what did Yoda say? 
do or do not, there is no try. Right. I mean, either you do it or and you I, don't. So, And I think that's where I'm coming from, too, because I'm still trying to do something, which is going to be part of the next part we're about to move into, is focus right. um, for me. But before I do move forward, to add on to what you're saying, you got your energies and your emotions that can bring out and manifest your words. You also have to take into account the five senses as well. Hmm. Okay, because preach it, girl. Preach it. if you're going to speak something, you're also technically hearing it. And that's going to cause those emotions to go up more. And that to me is going to make even more of a issue for your thought process to continue thinking you're not good enough or something's wrong or something's not going to be you're not going to be good at whatever it is that you're attempting to accomplish. So you do have it. And it's all for me. Sometimes it's almost like if you can hear it and you can see it, it's almost like you can taste things. I know it sounds weird. Okay. But you got to think about it. If you have a hate towards something or you're angry towards something, or you're something. probably going to get this bitter taste in your mouth yep. in a sense, because if you really have a lot of rage, I'm one of them. I used to have a lot of rage. OK, but I let that go. But I can still sit there. I mean, I could take this to a different actual logical place, too. It's like a cigarette. OK, stay with me for a minute. <laughs> if you have a cigarette in your hand, right, you're going to have it in your hand. You're automatically going to touch it. Right. So you don't feel it. So sure, when you feel it in your fingers. Right. And then you're going to put it to your mouth. Right. And that right there, you're really going to have your taste going because your lips are probably one of the most sensitive places on your body is your lips. And if so you, you and if people just for little fun fact, people, if you did not know this and I know it's kind of gross, but that's all right, because, you know, we have no filters here. All mm -hmm. right. But your lips. Have the same skin density and sensitivity as your butthole. Yep. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I know it's crazy, isn't it? So when you have the filter, which is that paper, okay, so it's like almost putting paper to your lips, it sticks to it sometimes, right? So think about the words that are coming out of your mouth. It's gonna stick to it, right? So think about it. All right. So keep tracking with me here. Now you have it in your mouth. With your other hand, you have a lighter, right? So now you're feeling this metal texture, a little bit of that friction too, when it comes down to those wheels, right before you spin it and click it, and you hear the <laughs> of the fire coming yeah, we, then you have the burning smoking kind of almost garbage taste in a sense right like the flint okay and then again now how's anybody ever said i hate someone and then feel in their throat on their tongue in their mouth and automatic was like disgusted with their self almost like they're gonna puke or vomit i've actually seen people literally throw up in, in the right? presence of some other people that they really really didn't like Okay, so think yeah, about probably. that. It's again, now you have a cigarette, yeah. you're smoking the cigarette, right? So now you have other things. Now, again, you have the cigarette in your hand, you're filling it, but guess what? I forgot to mention, you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. You're already using the senses already of now you're seeing it. You're seeing yourself do the action, okay? You're smoking the cigarette. Now you're automatically thinking, oh, man. Then you're going to start to realize what you're doing. Now you're putting the motion to it. You're making it, pulling it away. You're giving a puff of it. You're inhaling. You're exhaling. You already have it. So now you're seeing all of these emotions. Okay. In a sense, technically, right? You're going to breathe in and then you're going to exhale just like you would speaking, like I'm doing right now. I'm inhaling and exhaling at the same time when I speak. Okay. So when you do that, think about how that's going to react. If you're going to inhale and then exhale anger, what's going to happen? You're still going to see it. You're still going to feel it. You're going to still taste it coming out your mouth. Okay. And also, to add to that, talking about the spiritual energy mm -hmm. aspect of that, over time, please, guys, whatever you do, if you consistently speak that way, like that pessimistic sort of negativity, um, over time, you become a product of that. Um, you'll notice that days will become more difficult than they usually are. Um, also, when it comes to people, 
I've seen this. I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've seen it. But I've seen situations where certain people are at a specific location, let's say a party or get together or what have you. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden somebody shows up. Somebody shows up that nobody even thought would show up that everybody is hoping and praying don't sh that doesn't show up mm -hmm. and that person ends up showing up right so what i deduced from that is that the individuals that really didn't want that specific person to show up were talking about that individual almost the entire time if not days before that exactly and then all they all they're doing is that they're manifesting something exactly. that they don't want, right? And then they think that they're just you know venting out, they're just you know expressing themselves, mm -hmm. or you know whatever the case may be. But it's not just that. Literally, you are talking yourself into your own chaos at that point. And if you technically speaking, you're also starting now. Forming a habit, okay, of especially doing if you're that doing same it thing. over and over uh, and over yeah. again. And, and repeat, and trust me, y'all, you don't want to continue to repeat that history for the rest of your life because it'll it's literally hard to break it. I'm, I'm telling you that it's it's one not only the one of the hardest things to break, but it's also the easiest thing that clicks into your subconscious mind and it gets locked in there i always thinking of the worst case scenario okay yeah you're always thinking about the worst case scenario you're always thinking about you know how, how bad people are or what you know whatever the case may be i and listen and we're well, we're all human or at least partially human um mm -hmm. but it's but it's a situation where if we just took for a moment And we paid attention. And I and I was just talking about how I can't even believe I'm bringing this up. I'm bringing this up because I had a conversation with somebody about this. And, and I will say to you that your reality, quite literally, your reality is based on your habits. Yes, it is. It's based on your habits. It's, it's based on what you're doing every day. It's depending on how much love you give yourself, how, how much lack of love you give yourself, how much time and energy you give to other people. Okay, mm -hmm. how much you help or whatever. All right. And and the truth the truth of the matter is that <laughs> I, I marked this down here, and it's, and it's crazy. I, I put down workable rage. So so what I mean by workable rage is. Not necessarily letting the switch get flipped and, and you know, going into the, the worst extreme. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about using that rage in a positive way, you know, and creating, a, well, the best way to put it for me at least is, hmm, I had it, I had it on the tip of my tongue too sustainable energy like energy that can be not, not, maybe not necessarily sustainable but project uh, projective energy positive protective energy and that's where transmutation comes into play because if you can literally by the thoughts in your mind if you can change the very nature of the words that you use, which in turn, over a very short period of time, I, I sound I sound like I'm Albert Einstein here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy stuff. So, you know, with the words that you use and the thoughts that you have, and and the habits that you create and continue to do, you are literally creating this energy, this constant energy inside of yourself as well as within your environment. Mm -hmm. So. You need to look at what that is. Look at what you are creating. Mm -hmm. Not, don't worry about nobody else. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the the little, you know, little bluebird, little blackbird trying to, you know, tweet in your ear and trying to tell you, you know, how do do this like this or do this like that, you know, which is your friends and your family, coworkers and bosses and, you know, all that other crap that we fill our lives with. I'm not saying family's crap. I'm just saying that, you know, it's just stuff, you know, that we fill our lives with. Um, and, and really checking in with yourself and actually saying, okay, is this the reality that I want? Mm -hmm. Or am I just being a victim of circumstance? Survival mode. Well, victim of circumstance is pretty much like, I mean, it's even some of the Zodiac signs. They, mm -hmm. they're very flighty. Okay. Meaning mm -hmm. like they fly at the seat of their pants. All right. Which I know there are some people that are like that, but, you know, it doesn't really matter what Zodiac signs. It's just personality characteristics. But when we look at things like that, we say, okay, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever he's doing kind of makes sense. Or maybe, you, you know, you get to know what, like where the mindset, where the thought process comes from. Because it all, everything starts from somewhere mm -hmm. and again with the verbality you know with the, with the verbal vocabulary of what you're using that starts at the very day and you know the very time you plant your feet on the ground as soon as you get out of bed yes if, if you're still talk, talk like self-talking to yourself about what happened three nights ago or three months ago you're just holding on to that same energy what my question back to them is why are you holding on to it and what purpose does that serve for you that would be the questions i would ask only because you got to get to the root issue of things and that's why i always I, i'm here to help out with how to change your mindset and flip the focus on what it is for you like so that. when you use the things that we're talking about here the vision boards is things you want to accomplish in life and then how to start in a sense of that sense of awareness is the use of what we're talking about is those vocabulary so then we're going to move into focus here okay so my biggest thing okay he may have a different standpoint here on this than i will focus for me is one thing what is the biggest thing, okay, if you can say it off the top of your head, that's great. If you can't, write some things down that you're so passionate about that that's what your career is all about or you want your career to do for you. In essence, what is the biggest thing? I'll tell you mine. Mine is helping people. I love to help people. That is the biggest thing it is. And then, of course, I asked myself, and now, granted, this was 10, 11, 12 years ago, okay? It's a long time ago. <laughs> Um, and mine, it was, I wanted to help people end up changing how they perceive themselves based on how they see themselves. Okay. It could be through trauma, their environment, how they were raised. What could I do to help them be a better version of themselves? So that's where my focus is. So over, you know, the past years or so, personal things happen to me. I've already mentioned one. I'm a mom and I also have an ex-husband. Okay. I'm going to put my, I'm going to raise my dirty laundry out of here because I'm going to use that for a reason. Okay. So again, my first child 11 years ago, she'd be 12 this year. Okay. My pride and joy, the one probably had been most person to help save my life. Okay. I have a dark past. We'll get there at a different time. Mm. Okay. So with that, she saved my life, okay? I'm not going to lie. Becoming a mom to my firstborn opened my eyes to so many things I was doing wrong at the time, okay? And then doing so, I went into a marriage. And again, I'm still trying to find myself from doing the things I used to do to do what I'm now, okay? Was that the best idea to hurry up and jump into the marriage? Probably not, okay? However, mistakes were made. I overcome them. Now we're no longer together. With that, I have lost my focus because about four years ago I had another kid 
Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready for this because I could, okay? I ain't going to lie. I'm just now getting into my career, the one I wanted for the, so many years ago, okay? I had to take a little short break and do a different one, but you know what? It's helping me now. And With does, that. Doesn't it seem, and I know this is going to, maybe it's just me, um, but doesn't it seem like the universe provide you with some of the like the strongest challenges right at the very brink of you getting everything that you want almost like it wants to make sure that you're able to fight for it if that kind yeah. of makes sense i actually firmly agree with that because you know literally i go in i i was actually pregnant at the time didn't know it um, I go in for my orientation, right? Um, I'm doing great. Meet new friends, all my classmates, okay? Um, you know, I think of travel time was maybe an hour to two hours or whatever from where I was at. It's whatever. Um, but I had a great time. I did documentaries over everything. Um, and then three days later to a week later, boom, pregnant. Literally just starting my counseling career, I'm pregnant. And I am flipping out okay and, and again i'm not saying i never wanted a second child but at the same time i was just not ready for it in any aspect okay at the time you know well, but I had and, to and on top well on top of it i mean you may you're, you're saying sharing out your dirty laundry um yeah was, was there any specific challenges that came up with that child that made life a bit more challenging than it already is or it already was i should say i will say the biggest thing and this goes back to the marriage aspect here um we were always on a high okay now what do i mean by this? i was just going to ask you that okay Great. we always did something okay so let's say we got together we went out and then from there, we always did something always so high frequent, okay, vibration wise, right? So, you know how with the same thing, let's say you let's go with the cigarette option. You take that first hit of a cigarette for that nicotine to hit your body real quick, or that coffee, the caffeine, it hits your body real quick, and you're like, yeah, let's go, right? That's how it was with our relationship, okay? We were always doing something. We get together, a few months later, we're engaged, a few months later, we're married. Boom, then we're living together, then we're moving again, then we have an animal, then we're like, oh, kids getting into school again, first time, kindergarten type thing, and then we're on our honeymoon, our anniversary, we always did the biggest crap first, we never took a break, okay, right. so whenever I did finally get into counseling, or my degree for counseling, we was at a very low period, okay, where we couldn't do anything. Finances was really bad struggle for us. Um, and with that, that caused a lot of stress. Okay. And then you add baby. Okay. So again, when we went really low, boom, back to high. Well, I was already on a high because I was just getting into my field, right? Of what I wanted to do finally. And then I was hit with another high, literally almost a week afterwards, if not a little less than that. Boom. Right. And then I'm like, I'm freaking out now. You know, how you get over caffeinated and you're like shaking really bad. That was kind of like me. And of course, at the time, I was having really struggle times to kind of communicate this when you have multiple panic and anxiety attacks and stuff. It's hard to communicate things. Plus, I did have a little complex PTSD at the time because of my previous, you know, pregnancy. I had a lot of issues during this time. So well, I'm worried about this, too. So, so the point that I was actually attempting to try to make. You know, without getting severely personal. Tosha's got air by Darth Vader. <laughs> well, what I'm what I'm asking you is how difficult, or what what type of things did you have to, what challenges rather, um, did you go through uh, when you found out that you had an autistic child? I mean, she, what, what things do you have to do now that you normally didn't do? She was, she's never been formally diagnosed with it. Uh, to be right. honest, she does have a speech delay because she was, she was, she was a COVID baby. 
Okay, so the social aspect for her is pretty much non <laughs> non existence in a sense. Right. She's getting better. Don't get me wrong, but. That does cause a lot of issues because, again, during this time, I was with her a lot, but I was also still working. Um, That's a lot. And then with me working, he was double working. So I was I'm home with give all the kids. For that. Yeah. Sure. No, mad props for that. Don't get me wrong. Mm. I was working 40 hours, taking two kids, working on the house, and still going to school at the same time. So time management was very huge for me. But that's also where the you know, perfectionist I was talking about earlier came mm -hmm. into play too. One thing messed up, full blown panic attack, you know, one thing messed up or an argument were to happen, I was in shutdown mode. Right. Okay. <laughs> there is no ifs, ands, or buts on that. Right. Because I was so, I guess, determined to make it work for me. I did forget that he was there to help or was supposed to be there to help. So I did kind of forget about that because I was always that very independent person, especially with the background of already being a mom of one right. with my sister that I forget about everybody. And I focus just what I can do. But then also again, what I had to do, quote unquote. Right. So, how so did you, Oh, sorry. No, go for it. Oh, so how did you deal? And I guess this is the next thing that uh, we, we definitely wanted to touch to touch on. Yes. Um, it just flowed right right into it. <laughs> I know. Um, which is well, I have it written down as uh, scatterbrained between hobbies and interests. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, why why is that so important? I think it is because, again, with me being the perfectionist and everything, um, having multiple different thing projects. It does come easy to me, but I do really have to stick to a certain way of doing it. And then I also have to say for me is I was watching a, another video over, you know, motivational and one statement rang true for me. And that was when you're good at what are you good at? What's the one thing you are good at? OK, and I already stated with me, mine is helping people, right? And then kind of the counseling degree came in and I could further helping people in that direction. Mm -hmm. So the scatter part for me was what was I lacking in my focus and what was losing my focus at the time, right? Of course, I guess I took a, a dramatic extreme to mine and I got rid of one of mine, which was my marriage, <laughs> thinking that's what it was. Um, um, I'm not saying it was or was not, um, but it cleared up a lot of the chaos or chaotic energy for myself to be able to remove a lot so I can be able to find that focus again, which is counseling and helping other people. Um, it took me time to get back to that mind focus because of the scatterbrained energy and thought process for myself. So how did I get there? That's where the vision board comes in and then also goals. What was the goals for me to get to this place? Now, I have a big thing is self-care and how self-care has different aspects to it. And it's just not like spa day, girls night, get your nails done stuff. Mine is like that self journey in a sense of digging deep. Like what is something that you're holding on to that is preventing you to be the best version of yourself? Well, I mean, okay. we also got to think that, you know, just to add, mm -hmm. you know, society within itself, social media, mm -hmm. you know, news, you know, politics or whatever. I know there's a bunch of stuff that we don't discuss here, right? but because um, we have our own massive opinions about a lot of that, but um, more so, there's so much influence and and pressure to become someone that you look up to a lot of the times now i'm not knocking that ideology right okay? i mean if you find a coach you find you know you find a, a mentor you find your you know uh you know uh, what do they call that there's a word for it too thank damn it man i'm losing my idol yeah kind of like you're you know like, like an idol 
Um, not an idol meaning like a god or goddess or anything like right. that, but some something that you look up to and that you want to reach to. Mm -hmm. Now, me personally, and I'll and I'll say this: this is for you know possibly the young, any of the younger folks mm -hmm. that you know are going to be listening to this. Is that stay open, keep your options open. Um, I know that a lot of people just stick with one thing. Yeah, I look. And, you know, and I, I don't. I, think... I don't. Like you said something about like you know, find out what you're good at and, and become an mm -hmm. expert at it. I totally agree with that. Absolutely, one hundred or one one hundred thousand percent. Um, however, what I also see is that there are individuals out there that have a multitude of talents. Um, yes. that they could get really, really good at. Mm -hmm. But what I'm, I'm what I'm attempting to reach to is a little bit of the younger people, because you're gonna fail, you're gonna fail often, you're gonna get rejection. Okay, there is no manual that's gonna tell you, you know, how many times are you, you know, are you gonna get rejected, or how many times are you gonna be disappointed, how many times are you, you gonna get hurt. And that's based on you know your own thought processes and mm -hmm. you know emotions, actions and reactions. However, when when you look at all of this combined, I love the fact of finding a way to keep all that crazy stuff in your head balanced and centered. Yeah. You know, and, and be able to, because I used to be really scatterbrained at one point. I, I mean, I was bad. Okay. Like, I mean, I would literally, just like how you said it earlier, I, I would get so scatterbrained. I would, I would quite literally get into an anxiety attack. Yes. Each time, each time I get, I overthink something or whatever the case may be. And, and it's, oh, whew, but I, I was horrible at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I did to work through that was notebooks notebooks notebook notebooks or, or, or index cards or yeah yeah, yeah wh whatever yeah, it is yeah. and you write yeah. and you begin to write down everything that you're scatterbrained about yeah. so then finally you can get it out of your head onto a piece of paper so you can see it and you can say okay now i see it what's priority the and dream board and, what, and what's and what do i have to let go of Yes. Okay. Yeah. So for me and my profession, we call that the anxiety dumping book. <laughs> okay. Um, you no. Take it however you wish um, and use it if you want. It's just a regular book. I have one myself. Okay. I have it categorized um, so I can just flip through the actual page, whatever number. I have it tabbed and everything. Um, you don't have to get that detailed if you don't want to. Um, and that just says, okay, if you have a to-do list you need to do, write all that stuff down. And then yep. you can mark it off as you go. It's still there. You but know I love doing at. that. I really, really well, do. I, and, and I do too. What, it's what's thing. great. What's great about that too is that, but you can you can't be hard on yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I know. Listen, I, being tough on yourself is fine, but it, it gets to a point where it, it becomes destructive. Yes. Okay. It, that's why you it'd know it's okay. a whole purpose. Be, well, what I'm saying is, as you go through that list, as you keep checking stuff off, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, if you know, if there's still a few things that you that you have have not done, look at what you did do. And right, and, and, and don't be your own worst critic when it comes to yes. that stuff. You know, don't be too hard on yourself because the next day, I mean, we're never guaranteed tomorrow. But what we need to know is that it, it, you know, when we do wake up. And we have those extra things that maybe that, you know, we need to put that as like first priority, you know, the day after, you yes. know, and then, then get that done and then work on, work on the list, you know, for that day. Oh. Yeah. It's just, it's just a cycle. That's what, that's what happens. The biggest thing too, if you want to talk to do this real quick too, do the thing that's the hardest because mm -hmm. you're going to feel the most accomplished about, feel most accomplished. And then all the easy all stuff. All the is rest just is just going to be, Yes. Good. That's what I tell people all the time. Like, yeah. I'll tell you right now, I hate folding laundry and putting it away. Okay. 
I'm sorry. I know that's the most tedious thing in the world and the smallest thing in the world. Right. That's the one thing I don't like to do, but I make myself do it. And that's the first thing I do. <laughs> I have a pile of clothes that I literally just did laundry yesterday. Yep. Just sit yep. there still. And I'm like, Oh, you know, well, you know, and, and to add to that, the, the biggest, the biggest thing for me, I don't know, it sounds probably at the same level as to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. is ironing and dishes i know it's it's it, see the one thing see i have i have and i know it's just for me it doesn't mean that yeah. anybody has yeah. to conform to it but what i'm saying is that like when i wake up and it seems quite simple really mm -hmm. and, it, and it's very simple but it's practical so what i love to be able to do and a lot of individuals don't do this. And then and it's it could be laziness, it could be depression, it could be whatever. You know, whatever's going on. It could be that you're just too tired or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you're exhausted. Um, a clean kitchen. Yes. A clean yes. kitchen. Meaning at the night before you go to freaking bed, you make sure because I don't want to wake up at whatever time I wake up, walk into that freaking kitchen and have to clean. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Yes. I would rather do that the night before. I know. Mm -hmm. And some people are like, well, you know, we just throw a toss in. That's fine. Dishwashers are fine. Okay. But, but the biggest thing I know, I, I, I definitely have a dishwasher, but yeah. I mean, most of the time I wash the stuff by hand most yeah. of the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, cause I'm used to it. It's just part of, part of my habits. So, cause I mean, we didn't have a dishwasher where I lived for, you know, 18 years. So, I mean, you're so used to doing yeah. washing by hand. it's just normal. It's natural. It's, um, it's normal for me now because I don't have a lot of dishes. So. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, and, and on top of that, you also got to realize um, it's the same thing. There is a, a kernel, I think, that there was there's some uh, video on YouTube. I watch it a lot, too. I forget what his name is off the top of my head. But um, there's a, a, a kernel that talks or possibly Sergeant Major or something that mm -hmm. uh, talks about making your bed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know about this video. Um, and, and the craziest part of it is like, I started watching it, but I, I made it a habit to, to, you know, mm -hmm. to watch it every day to, for like an entire month and a half. I watched it every single, for, like clockwork, sometimes yeah. even more than once, you know, during the day. Mm -hmm. And what did I start doing? All of a sudden I started literally making my freaking bed as soon as I got out of bed. Yeah. And when I came back from the long day and he, this is exactly what he says. Is that you? You know, if you have, if you had a crappy day, you come back to a bed that was made, that you made. So it gives you a small amount of accomplishment, mm -hmm. you know, that feeling of accomplishment because you did something nice for yourself before you even started the day, right? And and it, it's not that simple. Like I hate ironing. I'm sorry. I'm using that word. Okay, I know. All right. I, despise it. I, I really, really do. I have probably 14 t shirts that I literally have. To, and I'm going to say this to you guys because, you know, anybody who knows about vinyl or, you know, anything like that, that once, when, you know, when you have a vinyl, you know, vinyl design on a shirt, sometimes you literally have to take Teflon, uh, you know, Teflon sheets and literally go over it with an iron to, you know, to, to iron out the shirt. So, mm -hmm. and it's, it's freaking tedious. It really is when you have, you know, more than like four or five shirts. So, yeah. and that, you know, that's one of the, one of the other things that kind of like gets underneath my skin is doing some stuff like that. But I mean, I, I do it, you know, I do it anyway, but it's right. a situation where being aware of possible outcomes, I'm going to, I'm saying this for a reason possible mm -hmm. outcomes like as for an example you fill the laundry basket when you're talking about laundry okay mm -hmm. that there's you know so something so simple okay you, you you pack the laundry basket you know with clean clothes and then you take the basket you know into the other room and then you, you do nothing with it and then mm -hmm. by the end of the night you go back into that room and you look and you're like <sighs> oh my god yeah i gotta yeah. do this now you know because yep. I don't, you know, well, that's just, again, that's my mentality. You know, sometimes I, it's like, oh, I got to do it now. I got to do it now. You know? Yeah. Crazy stuff. And, that, and that's one thing, too. That's why I even said it. Like, you look on your to-do, right? All the things that yep. you have to do. Yes. And then you yep. pick the top three. Yep. And then you start with the hardest. The hardest top oh, three. 
Right. Yes. And start with the one that you're just like, okay, if I don't do this one, I know I'm going to have like some sort of like a negative outlook on whatever day. Okay. I'm not going to have the day I want. Um, that's when, you know, or well, not the day I wanted to have or whatever it is that you want to say. Okay. Well, can, can I hold, can I stop, you know, put on, put that on pause for a moment? Um, because I like what you just said, mm -hmm. but there's some, there's a part of me that's saying, Just because you have those those hard priorities, and obviously everything else gets easier after the fact, but sometimes we have to motivate ourselves. I was actually going to flip right into that too. Go ahead. Yeah, you got to motivate yourself to actually get some of these yeah. done. So, with that being said, motivation. Uh, I would literally say motivation equals momentum. Yes. Okay. So that, that's my take on that. Oh, let me think about it. Okay. So let's say you have a depressive person. Okay. It's hard for them to get up. They can't do it. And they don't have the energy to get up and do something. Right. They're in that one episode that they just can't do it. Right. Or they feel like they can't do it. Let me rephrase that. Um, do one of the easiest things on your list. What and you build that, up momentum, that, that momentum is freaking powerful, man. I'll, it is. I will tell now, you. I don't know anybody else. So I actually start this way with a lot of either clients or people in general, even my kids and myself, mm -hmm. when I get into those rut days. That is 10 minutes. Take 10 minutes and go into one room change your life 10 minutes turn the alarm on i have an alexa so hey i have that i set alarm you can put one on your phone you can put one on your alarm clock if you have an alarm clock back in the day yeah. okay or a stopwatch android has it android has a timer there. yes stopwatch stuff like that yeah. there you go and right. it will sing to you whatever it is and beep at you when that beeper goes you, you stop. stop right you stop that's it. And, Ten and, minutes can change your whole perspective of a day. And you can and you, do this during lunchtime. You can do this in the yeah. morning. You can do it when, when it doesn't matter yeah. when you do it. But, but it kind of does matter because you want to make sure that you give yourself enough time after whatever experience that you're having right there to, to get into Process. that mode. You know, yes. you, you want to give yourself enough time to do it. So Yeah. And, you know, okay, I want to throw this out there. You can, We can do this real quick because, you know, today is actually supposed to be a really good day because today's what? Snow moon, full moon day. Give you a little special sneak peek for today. How about that? Um, I always say, because, you know, with full moons, it is to say that it is reflection, right? You got to reflect upon things, right? And I think this is a good time to talk about that. It doesn't have to be special like today. I'm just bringing it up because right. it is what today oh, it is. Makes sense. Yeah, it just falls and, right. Right. You know, if you are going through a really rough time, okay, and you're here, you're pulled to come here, and you're listening, and you feel the motivation from everything that we talked about, take that time to process those energies, mm -hmm. the, the, the feelings, the symptoms, whatever it is you're feeling, write it down, okay? Use all the tools we just gave you to sit there and just feel it, okay? Now, when I say feel it, I don't mean stay there, okay? So I have a little saying that I always say to people. You can feel sorry and sad and mad in a little island if you wish, <laughs> but don't build a house, okay? The goal of everything is to feel it, process it, move on. And I'm not saying that to sound like a bitch, I guess you could say, yeah. but I'm saying that because if you're gonna... so no <laughs> right. I'm not saying it to be that cruel person either. I'm saying it because if you're going to stay on this island, that's you're going to become that's the only place you're going to be. Air guess you're going to become the person you don't want to be. I mean, you... in order in order to become your best version. 
you must begin the process of going outside of your original person. Yes. That is, it is what it is, folks. I mean, I can say that my life hasn't really been, and, I, and it's not poor me, poor me. That's definitely not my intention for saying what I'm about to say. You know, I mean, I've been through what a lot of other people have been through, you know, the abuse, physical, mental, you know, emotional, um, you know, the heartbreaks, the numerous, numerous heartbreaks, um, you know, possibly being a magnet to a-holes, um, you know, and stuff like that. But, but it's a situation where when you begin to know who you are, when you begin to be confident with who you are and what you are capable of mm -hmm. and what talents you already have, mm -hmm. what talents you possess, that's when you really start graduating to an entirely different reality. Now, reality, I mean, we, yeah, we can look at it as the matrix all day long. I mean, we could call it a construct. We could call it, you know, a building or whatever. Um, you know, so, so many people have so many different, you know, opinions about what's really going on. Okay, that's fine. The one thing that we, well, everyone should be looking at now is how are we going to build a world sustainable how are we going to be able to go back to fluid prosperity mm. you know self-sustainability self-care self-love you know lo loving each other trust openly trusting again okay and things like that i know there's a lot of stuff that's happened in the past 15 years Mm. has literally made humanity think twice about its own kind okay yeah. Yeah. seriously mm -hmm. and we got to get back to the good vibes we really really need to i we mean do. yeah we need to i mean it's you know the listen to your favorite music dancing you know dancing in the freaking kitchen or you know in the living room whatever you know singing at the top of your lungs even though you're freaking tone deaf Okay, or you can't hold the tune to save your life. I mean, the whole thing is, what? And you got to ask your question. Now, I'm, I'm going to bring something up that I wanted to, when you were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, all the vibes and stuff like that, I, I wanted to get to something, but I'll, I'll get to it in a moment. Excuse me. But the truth behind living a life living your life of good vibes, joy, unconditional love. I, I get slightly emotional when I talk about that stuff. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, a, it's a choice. It's a mm -hmm. choice, but you have to keep yourself in high integrity with that. And you got to make sure that that is also part of your focus is that, okay, if you lost yourself five years ago or six months ago or, you know, or whatever, last quarter, in order for you to refine yourself, you need to find out what the heck did you do in, you know, in order to, um, you know, in order to be that, you know, wh what did you choose to do? in order to all of a sudden create that reality that you never wanted. Mm -hmm. That's a point. Like, okay, don't worry. Don't be too concerned in what, in like whatever everybody's talking about, you know, whatever pot, whatever popular or trendy, you know, unless you're an influencer or a social media mogul or whatever. The more times that we begin to reflect on all this stuff, Especially with like the strategizing, the planning, you know, being able to follow through on a plan, that's going to mm -hmm. take time. Yes. If you're not used to it, it's going to take time. Okay. Yes. You got to give yourself the benefit of the doubt saying that you are retraining yourself. 
-hmm. into doing something that you're not comfortable with. You're kind of, in a sense, like what he's saying is you're finding yourself and then you're trying to create a new habit. A new life. Well, that's the new habit portion, though. In order to get to that point, you got to create the new habits in order to create the new life. Because if you're going to want to create a new life, but you're still using the old habits, you're not going to get anywhere. Well, I watched this movie. It's called Celestine Prophecies. It's a pretty old movie. I think it's back in the 80s, 80s or 90s. The very first time I watched it, I got bored, so I shut it off like one quarter of the way into the movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to listen. I didn't want, I didn't want to pay attention to whatever the, the message was, you know, with, with the movie and the whole point and the plot. You know, I just didn't, I, I, for some reason I never gave it time. Right. Finally, when I gave it time and I watched the whole movie through its entirety, energy is one of the most important aspects of the human life because without energy we're like nothing without motion we don't create energy so as we're sitting around not doing anything not going for that walk not you know not going to well i mean you don't necessarily have to go to the gym you don't have to you know pay pay for a whatever membership of gold's gym or workout world or what you know whatever you know, in order for you to, to start moving that energy. Right. Energy becomes stagnant mm -hmm. over time, sitting still. Your body is filled with energy centers all or all within it. Like this tree of life. Mm -hmm. Okay, inside of every one of us, we have it. Okay. What happens to a plant that doesn't get fed? It dies. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't get water or sun over time, it dies. Okay. So, in order for us as human beings, to create the reality that we want, sometimes we have to do the things that we're afraid of doing. Sometimes we have to choose the long, hard road instead of the easy cut in corners, you know, just doing the, the, the minimal amount of whatever, wherever, with whomever, and level up. So many times I look at humanity and trust me, I don't go out much, but when I do, a lot of the times I notice how much control I have, not tyrant control, not like narcissistic control, you know, mm -hmm. but a control of the essence of the energy. You hop in a car, you walk into a room, you walk into, you know, you walk into a store. Mm -hmm. And you literally have the choice of what kind of energy you're going to, you're going to be in what you're going to have around you. Mm -hmm. And that to me too, it stems off of that is for me, if you change your energy or what you bring out, your vibrations, some other people can be touched with that energy and be able to transfer back to you and give you the same. And that spreads, you know, well, uh, my favorite thing is kindness. You know, if you're going to spread kindness, everybody's yes. going to do kindness. And it's, yes. gonna, it's, it's like, it's yes. a reaction, a chain reaction, and it's going to grow and grow and grow. So the more you do it, the more it's going to happen. And then again, like you said before, we tied all of this up in a little bitty bow. What you give is what you receive, right? Instead of bringing out all that negative and you bring out the kindness, you're going to get kindness back tenfold instead of the negative tenfold. You're going well, to get that. And, and on top of that, I'll say this. The, see, the way that the, oh man, I'm, I swear, I can't even believe I'm going to give some of my coaching away. 
All right. So here, here's what I know. Listen up. The universe never really gives you exactly what you're seeking. It gives you a version of what it is that you desire most. Now, is there an opportunity for you to have exactly what you're looking for with what you currently have been given? Absolutely. Absolutely. The universe doesn't necessarily meet anyone halfway. It's pretty much pretty cut and dry. You send out, you receive. You give back, you get back. Okay. However, there is a pretty interesting part to all this. And it's gratitude. Gratitude and appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, I remember just the other day I walked in. I, it was raining, actually. And I was walking in the rain to go to the, little, you know, the corner store. And I walked in, you know, shook myself off outside, you know, tried to get as much you know, water off, whatever. Walked into the store. All of a sudden, I felt this vibrational frequency. If you're aware enough, when you walk into a place, you'll know. You'll know exactly what kind of environment you're walking into. Mm -hmm. Just by the feeling of it. Okay. Now, you don't have to hold on to the feeling. Okay. You can just accept it for what it is. And then just release. Okay. Now, with that being said... More times than most, sorry, more times than most, we end up second guessing something that's incredibly important. One of the hardest things for humanity to possibly do. Patience. We always want something done day before yesterday. When we want something, we want it now. Some of the times we don't even want to do the work in order to get what we want. It's just what we want. Okay. And I'm using that word. Words we said not to do. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No. And that's why I'm saying those, those words is mm -hmm. because you need to, you need to understand, you need to feel the energy that's involved with it. Okay. Yeah, I just I got anxious all over. Yeah. Oh yeah. All of a sudden, it just, it, just, just, makes, huh. yeah, it just makes you feel yeah. weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it makes you feel funky. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and when you, and when you finally say to yourself, "Yeah, I can do that. I can have that. I can be that." Like the what is the 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 famous words of. I think it, not not in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but I, I know quite a few people have, say, have said these words. It says, I am that I am. Now, obviously, that's the, the definition of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's also an affirmation that creates responsibility and accountability. It says, okay, who am I now? Who are you now? Is that who you want to be? Because how you act, how you think, how you speak, and how you react creates your entire reality. No matter what that means. Mm -hmm. Take it as you will. Take it for whichever way you want to take it. Yeah. But if you're going to think that I, uh, this is a shitty day, this is a crappy day, you're going to have a crappy day, okay? Your, your energy is going to fill it, and all of a sudden you're going to have negativity and pessimism, and you're going to feel, you're going to, you're going to be mad at everyone and everything, and then all of a sudden your day is going to be like shit. So you got exactly what you wanted. Exactly. I mean, I can, I, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a brief thing here with that too. It, 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 for me, it's a perfect example for myself, okay? Sure. Friday. Okay, Friday for me, Friday morning, okay, if we want to get more detailed here. Talking Friday about morning was, yeah, I'm talking about yesterday. Yes. I, the day I was able to flip everything around, okay? okay, let me say this. Because I woke up, I woke up later than I wanted to. I was like, oh, crap, 
But I still got up. I got my coffee, got dressed, got my both my kids. Granted, my oldest got up earlier than I did and was reading in the car for an hour. <laughs> um, and then I had my youngest. She was getting dressed, but she was very allergic. And then I could tell she was coughing and runny nose. So she was sick, right? Okay. And I was like, oh, I didn't want that to, you know, again, she was not around in a lot of the environment. So anything that she's around, she can easily pick up something. Her immune system is not the greatest, let me tell you. Right, right. Okay, so she can get sick easily. Um, and only time can fix that. And with that, she was getting the sniffles, coughing really bad to the point where she was doing that dry heaving, coughing yep. thing. It was gross. Oh, okay, it, it was scary for me, right? Still got her dress, put her shoes on, got her jacket on, got everything up. We get in the car. Then I realized, oh, crap, I was supposed to meet my sister at her house to get her book bag to go to school. So oh. here I am driving across town, oh, going to get this. Then she's now coughing, hacking up a lung, it sounds like. So I was like, all right, I can't take her to school. Not today. Yeah, no way. I, she didn't have no fever. She just had that really bad cough. I just didn't feel comfortable with it. I was like, nah. Yeah, so what I do, I call my mom. Yeah, no, I get it. Right. Yeah. My mom, who's my babysitter at the time, or at this time. Um, so I call her up. Hey, sorry to wake you. Abby's doing X, Y, Z. I need help. Can you help me? She said, yes. And I was like, awesome. I'll be done early today. I'll be doing it. I'll be there in like five, 10 minutes. All right. I was able to drop her off. Now, again, I'm usually early. Okay. It's probably my time management thing. If it's off, my perfectionist anxiety part comes through, right? That day I didn't feel anything because in my head, I prioritized in my head. I already knew I was going to be behind more than I was when I flipped it. So instead of getting that me all riled up and crazy, right? But okay. It's fun. Get it's the good. center. Yeah, get the center. Let's go. And okay. I'm doing this as I'm driving with a sick kid in the back with the other one over here. Not even panicking. She goes, huh, okay, whatever. Like, I wish I had the same mentality right. as my oldest. Right, okay. Right, right. But I didn't have it. But I was able to flip it to a point where I was like, all right, what do I need to do to make this day better? So I did exactly what she said. I recentered myself. I was like, right. we got this. It's fine. She's not going to be late to school. She's not going to be, you know, anything. I just got to contact everybody involved and go from there. Okay. I made it to work. Actually, two minutes before my appointment, okay, I was able to do that and get my coffee and breakfast ready and eat afterwards after the appointment. Everything was fine. I got all of the stuff I needed to do at work done. And then I even left work early because I was all finished. I didn't have to worry about it. I left, went home, got her, got her food. Everything was good. Okay. okay. So, I call, it, so I call that something. Okay. Again. I always have some way of words. No, you're good. You're good. And, and so. what I have here that I wrote down was acceptable flexibility. Yes. And it's absolutely accurate. Uh, you need to have flexibility. Mm -hmm. Especially in, in your, your stuff. Your yeah. and, I mean, the whole thing is, is that you know, we always want what we want. We always, you know, we always have have to have things done in you know a certain way or what have you. I mean, there's other people that are just fluid, and you know, they they live you know mm. like that. My kid, kind of like a free spirit, you know, free spirit sort of thing. Um, yeah. but most of the time, we go into panic mode mm -hmm. when the plan that we have set doesn't work out. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. Um, more times than most, I've had to adapt. I had to be quasi-flexible as to what I would be doing at any given moment. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, anybody here that is a mom could totally relate to this. Or, oh, or a dad. Um, if yeah, you guys are here, too. I don't want to leave you out. <laughs> Oh, um, you know, but you know, th that's a perfect example of exactly what he's talking about because you never know when your kids are going to get sick. You never know if anything's going to happen, you know, so being able to be flexible, even if then you got to think about yourself. What if you get sick? You know, that could ruin quote unquote possibility, right? <laughs> your day, oh, yeah. your plans, your to do yeah. list on everything you want to do because now you're sick. Now, also, if you think about it in the terms of what we've been saying, especially Raven here, 
he's been saying is the universe might be telling you something. If you get sick or your kids are sick or something happens that is not according to you. Maybe it's time to take a break. (laughs) Right. You know, what does that mean? It could mean, hey, girl, you're going too fast. You need to pop the brakes a little bit. You're good, man. You know, you don't have to be there at like 630 when the the class opens up at seven. You You don't need to be there that early. Right. You know, you know. Yeah, what when it comes when it comes thing? to time management, a, a lot of people get paranoid with that stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm the same way too. I mean, if I'm not early, I'm late. That's just that's just yeah. my belief. That is yeah. the way that you know I deal with it because I'd rather be somewhere early enough that if something does end up coming up, that I be that I have time to deal with it. That's all. And, and that's exactly how it is with me, you know, being how I am and everything, you know, and that's why I wake up early and I do the things I do, but I also wake early for myself. So I do have that time to process the day, to process what I want, that self-care that we've been talking about too. I wake up 30 minutes early or I try, well, now my uh, my oldest gets up earlier than I do <laughs> to do her self-care. So she wakes up a little bit earlier than I do. And, but you know, but that is what we do. So if, if I have to be somewhere at seven o'clock, I'm usually typically waking up in between five thirty six o'clock to get what I want done. Okay, for myself. You know, here soon I'm gonna probably add some more things to that. But right now, mine is I want a cup of coffee in a silent room. You know, that that's it. I want to enjoy my cup of coffee, or if I decide to one day to have green tea or some sort of herbal tea, I am able to do so in a silent room. But I also use different techniques as well during this time frame um, to help me recenter myself and to have the day that, you know, I want to bring to myself. Okay, if I want to have a good day or if I want a certain thing. You know, and not in a sense of I want something greedy wise, but I want something to bring gratitude to me or the kindness to myself. I have to be that participant. I have to do that, you know, in a sense. Now, if I do it, necessarily it's going to come back, right? But you also need to be aware that you, I mean, no one should be dependent on other people. Right. Right for that happiness exactly you know, or that joy yeah. i mean we always I mean, know the happiness is temporary yeah. joy is always in process but mm-hmm. you know when when you're at that tough spot when you're at that you know low you know low vibration mm-hmm. well the, what we call low vi- uh, lower based vibrational living um you you have ways you have skills you have uh, things that you can do in order to raise you back up. Right. Okay. You always have to have that. So you got to give yourself, uh, you know, maybe you can use like an index card or like I said, a notebook, or maybe even make a little card for yourself, uh, you know, and laminate it. I mean, it's so easy. It's, you know, I mean, if you guys don't even have that and you have, you have tape or if you have paper or any loose leaf paper or anything, you can use the tape and paper and you can put it on a mirror. Right. Guys, I'm not even go. I, Got to a point before that I used lipstick and eyeliner before. That's how I use. And I know women on here and maybe some guys, too, have that in their house somewhere. Okay? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Or a marker. Yep. You know, Crayola marker here. Come on. I got crayon. Uh, (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Stuff that's easy. You can use a magic eraser on this stuff. Okay? It's not that hard. And, and And what's important to know about that is that focus of building the routine. Yes. Of and that's building. exactly what I think today's all is the awareness you got. You know, I'm all about, you know, self-reflection. I'm all about focus and goal oriented, but I'm also, you know, successful driven, obviously. Um, but I've I have so many different ways. But my biggest one is I'm more of a qualitative or a quantity, qualitative over quantity person. Quality okay? over, so, yeah, quality over yeah. quantity. You right. know, I want to have that. And it's more for myself, too. You know, I, I, the older I get, the more I don't want things. You know, I want experiences and I want to share knowledge and hope and, you know, different things that way. Right. So that's why I'm here today um, to kind of help spread that awareness. You know, like, hey, we all have traumatic pasts. We all have been in that rut before. But look at what I accomplished and look at what Ravens accomplished. And then, guys, 
look at what you have accomplished. I can tell you right now, everyone that's in this room right now, I am sure you're not in the same spot you were two years ago, one year ago. I would even say six months to three months ago. You're not the same person. Period. Point blank. I'm definitely not. I mean, I'm okay. definitely not the same person. I, I can tell I, you, I'm a completely different person. You know, I mean, like four or five be... years ago. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, you know? there's a couple of things that I've learned during the process of going through the, you know, that, that mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. and, and most of my lessons, and this is just me personally, mm -hmm. has been learning about people. Yeah. That's my biggest thing for me right now is just to learn about people, mm -hmm. learn about, you know, personality characteristics, how to, you know, reactions and actions, mm -hmm. certain words. I guess the best thing is to do as a human being is to learn. And I guess uh, uh, Cavill, uh, Cavell, or whatever his name is, uh, the guy that did Superman, a Man of Steel, um, he he said it the best because he was like, "Well, the one thing that I learned throughout the entire like you know journey of years that it took for him to get his very first you know debut on like you know Man of Steel and stuff like that," mm -hmm. he said the biggest challenge for him was to learn how to deal with people yeah. for what they are not for what they can be not for what they were what for, for where what they're they at are, now where they're yeah. at right now right now yeah and then, and then and, and you have to have that focus for everybody i mean raven you already know this too yep. when you first do something in the first session the first thing you always ask to people is why are you here yep what do you need what's your intention yeah, what's going on? What, what are you? What? And <laughs> why, then, do you why? Why do you need yeah. me to help you out? What, what, what am I doing here? What do I need to do for you? You know, it, it, it can be either motivating or not, whatever right. it may be. Right? I ask the same questions, and that's when the next couple of sessions afterwards. That's when you're talking. All right, what do you want to do now? Right. What do you want to be now? What do you want to be in six months? What, do you, what progress do you want? Where do you want to go from here? And sometimes, and sometimes that uh, I, I will say this, and I guess we'll we'll begin to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. um, the The biggest thing for me was to be able to cope. And I and I know that there's many many people out there that deal with the same challenge as what I'm about to say. People will be people. Mm -hmm. They will be their own human being. That's their Oh, God given right. Let's put it that way. Okay. You know, there's a, they were created to be themselves and that's who they're normally trying to be. And I say mm -hmm. trying for, you know, different connotation. Right. Um, the other part of that is that life doesn't necessarily have to be hard or difficult all the time. It doesn't have to be. Exactly. Most of the time, we're the ones that make it that way. It goes back to exactly what you were saying, that self-critic. Yep. You are your own worst enemy. You know, and another thing, too, I, I wanted to say, too, and the biggest thing for me, if you try something that is part of your passion and you fail, let me tell you one thing, and this is something I literally talked about, too, with mine. A failure is only a failure if you don't learn something from it. Good point. Okay. So even if you mess up, even if you backtrack on something, if you stop it, you focus on it, and you understand what you did wrong, you can know that you don't have to do that again. That's the biggest thing I can tell you guys. You guys are going to fall. You guys are going to stumble on your face. It's going to happen. Yep. But the biggest thing that you're going to have to realize is you're going to grow from it. Okay. Remember like the guy who did the light bulb. How many times had he did it? <laughs> thousands of times he made it before he actually succeeded one, one in making thousand, the light bulb. Yeah, one thousand and one times it took him to make the light right. bulb. Okay. He, he wanted to, he wanted to give up on the nine hundred and ninety-ninth time that he tried. Yeah. And, and he couldn't because I mean he just got so stick and obsessed. Yeah. With, with getting so close to to achieving exactly. that goal. Exactly. That it became a must for him. Right. Okay. 
I mean, same thing with like, you know, I, I know a lot of these things. There's, con you know, obviously there's, uh, what is it? Um, uh, conspiracy theorists and, and all, the, you know, all, the, all these things are stories upon stories about yeah. what, what's happened or who stole what from who or, you know, mm -hmm. whether or not something really happened. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it did or maybe it didn't. I'm just fill in the blank, guys. <laughs> right. You could probably I mean, take this anywhere if you I mean, wanted to. Well, the suggestion, Especially. the suggestions that we're giving are most of the time pretty common. You know, it's it's a lot of common sense. It is, but it, it, the, but the one thing that that. W that we want to extend to you before you know we end this on a, on a high note. Mm -hmm. That even if you fail, I, I love how I forget who exactly said this. If you are going to fail or fall, make sure you fall on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Yes. I like that part. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I live by the same, very similar, very similar to what you just said, too. Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you land among the stars. Okay. And yeah, and just it's like the star, the, card, the star card in tarot. What does the star mm -hmm. card in tarot mean? Well, at least to me, the star card card in tarot means at unlimited, untapped potential. Yep. So, when we think about the stars, you know, we look up at the sky, and we, you know, and we reflect on our lives and things like that. We're gonna repeat it. Look at where you were and look at where you are and look at where you want or desire to be. Exactly. Because you know, if you can exactly see it, they always say this too. And this has to do with manifestation and abundance. Mm -hmm. If you can see it, it could become real. Yes. And I mean that if I couldn't tell you guys anything throughout this entire event, that's that that's something that I would like to share with everybody. If you can mm -hmm. see it, you can achieve it. Period. Damn. You just got to do the work, man. That's it. That's what it is. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. You got to run the laps. You got to do the marathons. You got to do whatever it is that you need to do. Whatever you your fight. whatever your obstacle is, overcome that. Overcome. <laughs> well, I mean, well, less violence, of course, but <laughs> but but it's a situation where I mean, you you need to know that what you're aiming for is possible. You have to believe that it's possible, right? Yeah. Oh no! Like I said, all the drugs size I just did just a few minutes ago. You know, it, it's right. He's right. You know, what you give is what you get. What you do is what's going to give you what you, the motivation you need. And a lot of times it's all about the choice. And this, you know? is why, and this is why we're here. Right. Like, we're literally just giving you the platter with everything on it. That That's I mean, literally what we're doing here. But You just got to take the platter and use it. Uh, and you actually got to eat the fucking food. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not lying. But you know what I'm <laughs> my that's that kind of slipped right there um <laughs> but but yes that is true though but i mean you you need to see what you have you need to know you believe in what you have everybody's got talents everybody's got things that they're really really good at sometimes when we're kids we actually learn what those things are and then as we become an adult we kind of like put some of those things or all of it like behind us. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, sometimes we never feel like we're achieving what we always wanted to achieve because right. whatever it is that we were very good at and we love doing, we're not doing anymore. Mm -hmm. And we got to yeah. get, back, and we got to get back to that is right. doing the things that we love. I agree. Because if we do the things that we love with compassion, with empathy, with passion, all good things will show up in your life. 
Now, before you guys say anything or do anything irrational, please do not say that, oh, if I'm not loving my job, I got to leave my job. That's not what he's saying. <laughs> well, no. well within I'll always say that because I have a feeling like some people will be like, oh, that means I got to leave my job so I can do what I like. Well, no, but at least you can yeah. you should begin the process of admitting to yourself that mm -hmm. you are aware that whatever is going on in this reality is not yes. really what you're looking for. Right. Then build the plan so. to change your reality to ma to match and mirror that which you desire. Yes. But that's going to happen over time. It's not. I mean, yes, there are people that can do radical choices and radical actions, you know, and and just you know change their life a yeah. thousand percent within you know within a very short period of time. Yes. But for those that aren't like that, give yourself the chance to work through it. Yes. See if you can be an influence at that place. Okay. See if you can assist in the transmuting of negative energy into positive energy see if you can now if after all your efforts you still feel that you know radical change is imminent then you just got to be prepared to work through that as well yes if you do make that choice if you do make that decision you literally need to be prepared for that okay for whatever comes after that yes. Yeah. So don't make a thing, choice. So what, yeah. what we're saying, we want to be very clear. Don't about, do the choice now. Yeah, Let's yeah, focus so, on what we need to do first. Yeah, and we're make, not at the choice of making decisions yet. That's right. that's what we're getting at. That's make, a, make, later. Dang, make dang sure that the mm -hmm. decisions that you're making either benefit you or benefit you and everyone else included yes and if it yeah. doesn't either way you you're not needing to do that yeah okay and don't let anybody pull at your heart your heart strings yes okay because people have a tendency of doing that especially bosses co-workers family friends mm -hmm. okay they 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 see you doing something that makes them feel uncomfortable and they want to yeah. drag you right back down to their to their level again mm-hmm so they feel like they got some uh, somewhere, you know, somebody that's at that yeah. comfortable zone with them. Yes. You know, um, and if that's that's not something that you feel where you should be, then you don't need to be there. I mean, yeah. you have to make the choice. So that's why. Let, we, yeah, I would definitely. We, yeah, it, well, I'm not saying don't do it. Don't do not do it. My thing is, is like right here and there in this time, we want. The make awareness the right. to be there first. Make the right okay. choices. Make the right. right choices for you. Yes. Not, not anybody I mean, else. You no. Know, okay. Yeah. No, not anybody else. You. Yes. Okay. My big, I always, you know, maybe it's part of my, you know, background on my end here is, you know, don't make irrational choices. That's the only thing I have to say to end my part off here so we can move forward here. Right. Because. You don't want to make an irrational decision when you're not ready to do so. That's where the awareness and all the things that I said today, those, the vision boards or dream boards, um, and then how you're going to speak from now on and, you know, where's your focus at? Oh, yeah, what type of words are you all using? Of, yes, because of all of this does play a huge factor in how you're going to plan and then go put all of this into action. You uh, know, that's how even, I see it. I'll even give a really quick example before we go. Uh, just the other day, you know, I know a lot of individuals probably ex have experienced their nasty neighbors, you know, the people that get under your skin all the time, that do stuff that just want you to do something incredibly violent, which I do not recommend doing. One, one day I was having a conversation with my wife and we were talking about the neighbor and all of a sudden I stopped. I looked right at her and I said, you know what? Why are we talking about this? She's like, what are you talking about? So why are, why are we so focused 
on somebody else when all that we need to be doing is just focusing on ourselves. Yep. She went quiet. Like she had nothing to say. And that's absolutely true because we find things in life that we we spend time and energy on that, that are not good for us. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Straight up. I have totally, I've removed, released, and purged so many things in my life that I'm so glad that when, like, when I walk outside now, I have that confidence to know that I am in absolute control of the energy that I wield. And nobody else is going to mess that up. And that's where we are attempting to bring you to. Mm -hmm. Is that confidence? That knowing that you know you, you know exactly. who you are, you, you know, you bring yeah. your power back, you take it back if need be. Mm -hmm. Not in a violent manner. And you become your best version. And that's and that's where we are. Now, uh, the next event, uh, you know, we're being, we've been pretty fluid with, you know, the subjects and stuff like that. So I, we're going to continue. It's just going to be spontaneous. It's going to be something that obviously you may or may not be thinking about. Uh, but just look out for the next video, uh, the next webinar. Uh, chat is open. Just FYI. Again, chat is open. Um, so if there's any Q&A, you know, any questions that you, would you guys would like to ask uh, at the end of the video, uh, please feel free. You can either utilize uh, the chat that's in here, or you can pose your questions um, by utilizing uh, the email that's provided. And we'll go ahead and go over it. And we may we may make a couple more videos, you know, based on your questions, based on you know what's whatever's going on in your lives. Mm -hmm. And and we'll attempt to assist you and help you work through it. Now before now, before we leave, I did want to share one more thing, and that's the five Reiki principles. Look it up. It's life-changing. When you guys start paying attention to that, you're going to know the difference, and you're going to see it right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. All right, so until next time, guys, I am Spiritual Coach Raven Nightclaw, HP. And I am the hippie shrink, Selena. All right. And we say brightest blessings to you all. Love and light. Namaste. Be humble. Be blessed. Live in the vibration of love and take care of each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.